So today let's talk about some overlooked and underrated small telescopes. Now by a small telescope, I mean something with four and a half inches in aperture or under. I think once you get into that five inch range, you're into a midsize. These models aren't exactly unknown, but they may not be the first models you think about when you go shopping within a particular product class. So let's get started. So the first telescope on this list is the Orion X-T 4.5. That's right, it's the baby in the X-T line, the one that you probably never even give a second thought to, despite the fact that I've been promoting this thing for quite some time. This thing's significant for a couple of reasons. First of all, there aren't a lot of four and a half inch Dobsonians out on the market. Celestron and Orion tried to make one a few years ago with a sort of a single stock mounting mechanism. Now, they were okay, kind of disappeared from the market. This one is a full fledged member of the XT family. The other reason it's significant is because there's a lot of junk masquerading as four and a half inch F8 Newtonians right now. Uh, I've got a lot of these out there with spindly, shaky equatorial mounts and junky 0.965 inch eyepieces. This one's got a bona fide inch and a quarter focuser and they give you Orion Sirius plausels. So let's get the bad stuff out of the way first. First of all, yes, it does have that plastic focuser. I don't know what to do about that. I will say this, this model is small enough that you're not going to be pushing this big tube around and banging it against walls and against the door jam of your car. I think it's slightly less likely that you're going to damage that focuser, but you do have to be careful with it. Second thing that's often mentioned is that this model, as far as I know, has always had a spherical as opposed to a parabolic mirror. I wouldn't worry about that. You know, it, it's fine. It's F8. You're really not going to notice anything. I've gotten some really good planetary views out of this. Really, the worst thing I could find to say about this is its height. It's a good height for a kid, but an adult, you're going to be hunched over. You can try sitting down on something, but you're still going to be pretty low. I've had people say, well, I'll just bend over while looking at it. Uh, it's really low. I don't know long term how happy you're going to be doing that. So they do make this sort of riser, this daub base for it. Orion's had it in their catalog for quite some time. I've always felt that thing is rather expensive for what you get. And I, know, I do know people who make their own do-it-yourself kits on these. Maybe somebody out there who's good at woodworking can make some of these daub riser bases for us and sell them to the rest of us at a reasonable price. Maybe the best thing I can say about this Orion X-T 4.5 is its non-technical specifications. I know you've seen them in pictures, but if, unless you've seen one live in person, it's hard to describe just how cute this thing is. I mean, you want to pick it up and pet it and take it home with you. If you're used to looking at an X-T8, this thing is just going to look positively miniature to you. And in fact, it almost kind of inspires you to see what you can do with a four and a half inch Newtonian. I can recall a couple of years ago, we were at a Messier marathon and there was a 10 inch reflector just sitting there. Nobody was using it. And the X-T 4.5 was on the other side. You know what? It was about Virgo cluster time of the evening. I'm going to try doing it on the 4.5, see if I can do it. And I got all the Messier objects. So a little bit of a challenge to see what you can do with a smaller aperture telescope. I am a little concerned about the price. I can't believe you could get these a long time ago for $179. They're creeping up into the high 200s now. You know, maybe they'll come down again, or if you can check Orion's website in their clearance section, sometimes you can find one for less money. So the second telescope in this list is the Astrotech AT72, a 72 millimeter F7 ED refractor. If you're new to the hobby and you're just wondering what all the fuss is about with an apochromatic refractor, this will give you a taste and really what's ca its calling card is its value. I can't think of a more cost effective way to try this out to see if you like it. There have been a couple of different versions of, it, of this. This is a Mark I, but it really does a great job of uh, ticking off all the boxes. It's got a retractable dew shield. It's got a two speed focuser. This one rotates and you have a foam fitted carrying case here. It's got a nice dust, uh, dust cap here. It's not a piece of plastic. It's a piece of metal. And perhaps most of all, when you buy a, a nice refractor, one of the first things you wind up doing is shopping for rings and a plate. If you're new to the hobby, it may surprise you that we are so concerned about these rings and plates, but on a better refractor, these things start costing a lot of money. Well, this thing has a built-in foot here, and this is actually Vixen compatible. So you actually don't have to buy rings or a plate with this. It's kind of 
molded in and built in for you. About the only criticism I might have of this thing is there's no provision for a finder. So I put this base on here for my Rigel Quick Finder. It's a $40 adder. And again, the value is just unbeatable. These things should be flying off the shelves. And I know some of you have them. Like I say, there have been a couple of different versions of this. This is the Mark I. They had it in white and in black. The Mark II cosmetically looks very different. It's an F6 as opposed to an F7. Like I say, the cosmetics are very different and it is said to have better glass. I don't have a Mark II here, but those of you who do own both versions tell me that they're both pretty equivalent and they're both very much worth owning. Now, back in the early days when I was just starting to get involved in astrophotography, I got a cheap Astrotech AT2FF field flattener, which I still have to this day. And I was surprised at how good these photos are. The one of the horse head that's popping up here somewhere, I actually had printed up pretty large and I showed it in a gallery for a while. This was my best image of the horse head that I had taken for many years until I started Im taking images through my Takahashi. And I know some of you get outstanding images through these things because you send them to me. So the next telescope on our list of underappreciated telescope is the Celestron C90 new version. We do need to specify it's the new version because the original versions from the early 1980s, well, they didn't have a great reputation. Now we're talking about the new version here and they package these very attractively. Sometimes you get a backpack, they put accessories with it. Sometimes you get a tripod with it. I had one of these and I had a ball with it. So if you're looking at a 90 millimeter Maxitov like an ETX, take a look at this one. You might find that this one is a little bit better value and a little bit better construction. For one thing, it's made all of metal and it has a real inch and a quarter visual back on it. So you can put your own diagonal on it and you don't have to depend on that flippy mirror thing on the ETX. So I had one of these for a while and on August 21st, 2012, Hard to believe it's been that long ago, but it was a clear night and I was just taking images of the moon. I had it on the next star mount, which is behind me somewhere here. But uh, the C90 doesn't cover the entire moon. You could only image about half of it at any point in time. Then you image the other half and then you marry the two in Photoshop or in some stitching software. The next night, I got another one. And the night after that, I got another one. After the first three nights, I started watching the weather forecast and it was looking clear for the foreseeable future. So I just kept going and I got this image. This is 13 clear nights in a row, all the way to September 3rd, 2012. And if you remember what happened on September 4th, 2012, the remains of Tropical Depression Sandy, which hit New Jersey, came through and I lost three nights. That's the only reason the sequence stopped. So those of you who live in places like Arizona, New Mexico, and West Texas might not be too impressed by this, but I've had meteorologists tell me that the odds of getting 13 clear nights in a row in this part of the Northeast US, it's well under a million to one. And so after all this was done, I put them all together in Photoshop in the image that you saw earlier, and I had that thing printed out. The actual native resolution was over 20 feet. And I've had people suggest that I should actually try to print that out. So again, I had a lot of sentimental value towards this thing. And one of the dumbest things I ever did was sell it. I don't know why I sold it. It's not taking up any space around here. I don't need the money. I didn't get much money for it. But at Stella Thane one year, I put it up for sale and somebody bought it and it's gone. Yeah, you should never have done that. So the next telescope on this list is the Vixen ED81S, 81 millimeter F7.7 ED series refractor. I had a review on one of these earlier, you should check that out. If you're looking to upgrade from, say, the class of an Orion ED80, this is definitely something you should look at. I had that thing in here, I had a ball playing with that thing both visually and photographically. Performance wise, it's right up there with the very best. They save a little bit of money on the mechanical construction. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's not quite that piece of jewelry that you'll find in a Questar or in a Takahashi. But again, the advantage is it doesn't cost quite as much. Definitely worth your attention. So the last telescope on this list is the Teleview 85. I know it's kind of strange to be seeing any Teleview product on a list like this, but I don't know, maybe it's where I live or who I hang out with or the people I know, but I don't see nearly as many of these things out there as I think should be out there. You know, I got a letter the other day from somebody who said, you know what, 
I want an astrophysics stowaway. It's the only thing that's going to make me happy. Well, okay, I'm glad you figured out what makes you happy. Not all of us know that. But think of what you're going to give up to get this thing in terms of time and resources and money. You know, you may never get one of these things. I don't know of any owner of a Teleview 85 that isn't thrilled with it. And one more for good measure. If you've always wanted one of Teleview's outstanding quality Altaz mounts, but you don't want to pay the price for a panoramic or the Gibraltar, they sell just the head. This is a Teleview Telepod, and it's threaded at the bottom, and you can put this right on your own tripod and make your own mount. The tension adjuster's here. It's drilled for several holes on the bottom here. This spacing here is for the Teleview standard clamshell, but you can make this work with the other mounts as well and the other telescopes as well. If you have a Vixen compatible plate, you'll figure it out. So there you have it, a list of underappreciated overlooked small telescopes. I hope I've brought something to your attention that you may not have been aware of before. Did I miss anything? Is there something that's underappreciated that should have been on this list? Let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you soon.